Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Nerdverse Odyssey, episode 35, 5, 4, 34, 34, 34, 34. You ask us like any of us Every, count. Uh, yeah, I know, right? Uh, it's not like I name them in numbers. <laughs> uh, I believe episode 34. Ma Hello, I'm your host. I'm the Nico, the host. Uh, red shirt. Which one? Pencil-ish, like, marker-shaped mustache, possibly redneck, definitely Ron Jeremy wannabe. Hunter, how you doing? Pretty good. <laughs> I'm a lot more employable, at least. <laughs> I oh, like how James yeah, was, right. slightly, it was slightly confused as if it was him or not. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Fair enough. Uh, and the imper interrupting hippopotamus himself, Mr. Glenn, how you doing? Interrupting oh. hippopotamus. Okay. And <laughs> of the original crew, we have the one and the only, the man who loves the N64 so much he wears it on his chest. Mr. Rico, how you doing? I regret nothing. Feeling good today. Feeling good, good words. And last but certainly not least, uh, today's special guest, the one, the only, he has been talked up by Glenn so many times because of his sweet, sweet, sultry Walking in Memphis rendition. Mr. James Olsen, how you doing? I'm doing pretty good. All right. Oh, not only start with the noises. <laughs> not only is James a spectacular singer, he's also my uh, uh, partner in the World Darkness uh, uh, project that I've been working with him with. It was actually his brainchild, his project, and I was just brought on to help. So all praise and glory for this project goes to this guy because uh he's got a spectacular mind about uh about storytelling that i really really enjoy so uh nico how was your week it was it oh oh you listen you were you were sucking him off so hard there i was gonna just go directly over to him to have him do his week since he's our guest so Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I will pause my week and go to Mr. James. Mr. James, how was your week? <laughs> uh, well, my week was pretty good. Um, so this week I pretty much have been um, enamored with the Spellmonger series. Um, been in the middle of those audiobooks. Pretty much on book 13 of... Uh, I guess I want to say it's 17. And it's pretty much about a wizard in the middle of a war with the goblins trying to figure out how he can save the world from a goblin invasion. Okay, what was the name of it? It's The series is called the Spellmonger series. Spellmonger, okay. Um, but the book that I'm on is actually called um, it's not Foot Wizard, it's called Hedge Mage. Hedge Mage, okay. I'll have to look into that. That sounds like... So is it kind of like a gritty story, or is it kind of like a little comedic? Is it full comedic? Um, what's the tone? So the tone of the story, it's, it falls a little bit more along a, a political war story. Okay. So um, when you go through it, there's definitely the idea that there are mages fighting goblins. Um, and for the most part, you have the kind of cynical mage dealing with a goblin horde. Um, in this particular culture, being a mage pretty much takes you out of the class system. So you're kind of just like, once you find out you have magic, you no longer can maintain your class in society. Well, as this war progresses, the mages started getting their class back in society. So it starts creating the bias or you start seeing the bias the the world has about people having magic, and that is kind of peppered all in through the politics Ooh, of fighting the Goblin War. I never would have thought of a fantasy political thriller. I like that. I, I like that concept. I'm gonna have to take a look into that. Have you watched Star Wars, bro? Or That's any fantasy book ever written? <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, listen. it's like what was Lord of the Rings? You know. <laughs> Yeah, the only thing okay. different about this one is that the mages are the marginalized class in mm -hmm. in this universe, which is almost never a thing. Usually, they're the the highbrow dickheads. 
right? Well, at, at least at one point in time in the story, it was kind of a fall from grace. So the mages used to be at the top, but um, they basically sunk an island. So they end up going, well, we no longer want them to be in charge because they, they had magic and it put them above everyone else. And they were like, we don't want to do this anymore. And so they, the corrective action from having mages in power before was to take away their social status. So now with the new invent of the problem that they're facing, the only people who are capable of fighting this are the mages and they had to reinstate their status. So you start actually hearing, which is very interesting because normally I don't like political political fantasies. Mm-hmm. You hear everyone's biased. So what do the upper nobility feel about the peasants? What do the people without magic feel about the people with magic? And what do all the races feel about each other? Whether it be the elves, the goblins, and the the dwarves. Okay, interesting. Interesting. I like it. I, I'm probably gonna have to dig into this. Yeah, I'm, 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 well, I'm gonna get political the first one intrigue try. myself. <laughs> I put it in the general chat. It's on nice. Amazon Audio. Yeah, I saw that. Thank you. Appreciate good it. good call, Rico. All right. Uh, so what else have we been doing, man? Me? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> uh, we I, well, I went on we went on tangent there. So sorry. Oh yeah. Um, outside of that book, and for the most part, I've been doing a little bit of singing and um, trying to build some up with that music part of myself as well. And I'm very, very much so kind of like running all over the place with World of Darkness because I um, get thrown into a lot of the World of Darkness forums. Mm -hmm. Um, and they start asking me, hey, do you know how to play this werewolf game or do you know to play this vampire or changeling game? Normally the card games because Mm -hmm. those are kind of on the dead side. So I normally end up with those. So at least once, okay, at least five days a week, somebody asks me a question about one of those. Interesting, okay. He's sort of a a dead game archaeologist (laughs) slash, uh, you know, uh, anachronist. Whenever it comes to that sort of stuff. <laughs> All right, fair enough, fair enough. All right, uh, any... Would you, if you if you'd say if you'd agree with me, James, <laughs> you look well. So I mean, I've, I've been really focused on the World of Darkness games. So as of right now, it's pretty much been the Rage game for Werewolf the Apocalypse. Um, they call it Vitez, but it's Vampire the Eternal Struggle um, for Vampire the Masquerade. And then there's Arcadia the Wild Hunt, which is about changing the dreaming. So those are the main ones I've been focused on, um, trying to bring some of them to real-time gameplay. So for the most part, I get bombarded with questions with them because in the area that I'm in, um, there isn't a lot of live play for those, so I find myself traveling to play them. So... Speaking of uh, questions about games, I have a question for you, James. Why did Joey Wheeler go to art school? Joey Wheeler? You mean Joey Wheeler? Isn't that the one on Yu-Gi-Oh? Yeah. Where's that? To learn how to playing. draw his next card. To draw his next card. Oh. Okay. And I, cool. I, I didn't even get a smile. Oh, that, there you go. That was like really that. bad, dude. <laughs> so Hunter has this running theme where every episode he has to do a dad joke. Okay. And they, they, there's. You he's say had dad a joke bangers. like these are comedy gold. <laughs> well, you've had like a handful of bangers, but so, uh, you've had some fucking stinkers. What are you talking about? I, I worked that one right into the conversation. Okay, okay fair. Yeah, I'll give you that. Your the way you interrupted was very good there. But, I mean, I'll give it to you. I'm actually surprised I remember Joey Shit. Wheeler was on you. <laughs> I was, too. You thought about it, and then you got there. I was like, oh, I was like, okay, New this York. might land. <laughs> but he's supposed to be like, he's supposed to kind of have that New York, yo, is this the spirit of the cards, man? Yep. You know, it's- yeah, exactly. <laughs> he's he's the dumb Brooklyn friend, for sure. Uh, but, yeah, James, any, uh, have you, any watched any movies, playing any games, anything like that? Nope, just the, just the White Wolf ones. Okay. 
All right. Analog. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So um, I just, I guess, just pass it off to somebody who hasn't said their week yet, and we'll uh, we'll get this gravy train rolling. Well, I mean, you didn't tell me how to do hot handoffs. But being that you listen, <laughs> it was an implied hot handoff. <laughs> go ahead, go. <laughs> go ahead, do the All thing. Right. All right, I'm doing the thing. All right, so um, for this week, uh, one of the big things that uh, happened was episode four of Talkies Radio Show was released. Everybody who watches this channel should also watch that show because uh, I voiced three characters in that episode. It's also the first one that I produced and written for. Um, it's pretty funny. And it's, it's, it's got like that Adult Swim stoner surreal yes. comedy to it. And Hunter... Uh, I don't know if I should be the one to say it, or if you would like to say it. If, with your permission, I would, I would like to proceed. You, you can mention your part if you'd like. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, so, so uh, uh, with the uh, last week, I, I made mention of uh, getting a part in the Justice League audio drama for Scyther Inc. Uh, the people who do uh, audio dramas for various different. Um, uh, different IPs. Well, the secret that I've had to hold on to for three weeks, almost a month, um, was that I'm also playing Sinestro in... I'm sorry, wait. Cameron Hodge, J, uh, X-Men. Mm -hmm. JLA, I'm playing Sinestro uh, for the same company. And so uh, I get to play two bad guys That's pretty cool. on uh, pretty audio cool. drama. Super excited about that. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, third thing, it's really weird because, like, basically, Hunter, you started me on this path <laughs> for 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 voice acting, and like, once I hit the the casting call club resource, basically, they're like, "Holy crap, man, we we like the way you sound." Here, take this. Hey, hey, can you try this? Hey, can you try this? Can you try this? And now all of a sudden, I have like four fucking projects <laughs> that that uh, they want me to voice act for. Nothing that takes a lot of time, but something that that basically like I do my part, and I'm like, yeah, uh, you take that, man. And then you know, I send it off, and then they take it, they use my voice, and uh, you know, stuff happens. Um, and so, also on top of that. Uh, I will be playing Batman in a Batman Lego uh, animation. That is literally called... like right up your alley, too. <laughs> it really is. Because of the the <laughs> uh, horrible it's... childlike levels of love you have for Lego. <laughs> <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Let's not get carried uh, away with the Listen, we all have our plastic I mean, crack it's... addictions. It's not uh, a whole oh, oh, lot Hunter's going to go pull up his Legos. It's not a whole lot of Lego, just a few Legos here and there. I have my Pokedex on display right here. <laughs> it's currently got Pikachu uh, in there. Not to mention nice. my my uh, tentacle monster from... Uh, oh, this the, is a family uh, show, Glenn. You can't show that. <laughs> from the the uh, Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. Nice. Yeah. Oh, uh, the the Wish.com Shumagorath. No, it is, it's just Shumagorath. It was, no, uh, it wasn't in the movie. Uh, it was said. What, what was what that? Had, if I remember when I was reading, uh, I read something. It was it was named something different that wasn't Shumagorath. Okay. Well, the Shumagorath esque uh, creature with the one eye and the tentacles that fought everybody. I have that hanging up there. Um, Oddly enough, next and, to a pagoda he made. I don't know why. It's <laughs> a pagoda. Hunter got it. That's all that Japanese matters. structure. Yeah. Anyways, <laughs> <laughs> so anyways, uh, but yeah, uh, the name of it is going to be called Dark Prince Charming, um, and uh, it is, yeah. it's actually a serious Lego animation, like a, a serious toned show, mm -hmm. uh, and basically out of, I think it was like uh, 121 applicants for The Voice, I got it on, uh, because I sound... I can do the the Batman animated series voice, uh, voice actor, to sound kind of like him. Apparently, whenever I'm not in my happy, fun sounding voice, whenever I can be like you know even toned and stuff, um, it's quite plastic. 
you know, uh, uh, my voice, not the the actors, although it is kind of, I don't know. Anyways, uh, so yeah, it's been a lot of voice acting stuff this week. Um, not to mention the fact uh, I finally beat um, the entirety, 100% of uh, Thank Goodness You're Here. Nice. Um, and it's the, the game is basically just a gigantic dick joke. <laughs> that's, just, that's all it is. It's like you stand there and you're like, uh, uh, you know, you're like milking this cow and then you're slapping this fish and it's like, that's not a fish. And that's an oddly shaped, <laughs> you know, uh, cow teat. Uh, but no, <laughs> it's, it's British humor. So it's highbrow, but it's also dick jokes. Um, so got it. <laughs> All the same. Um, uh, oh, and, you know, just taking care of my kids. And uh, I'm going to the Texas Renaissance Festival this weekend. My Ooh. my wonderful, wonderful aunt uh, is going to be taking care of my two beautiful children so I can take my wife to Ren Fair with just us so we can tromp around like, you know, normal people. What's mm -hmm. up? Where is it at this year? The rent fair? Yeah. Is it always well, the rent fair? Or does it travel around Texas? No. Uh, so there is two major Renaissance fairs that we have in in Texas. Uh, one that occurs during the fall, which is the Texas Renaissance Fair, and that's been going on since forever. I think they started what in the seventies, Crystal? Yeah. It's been going on for a couple of decades, um, but it's like the main one. It takes place in Plantersville, Texas. Uh, just northwest of Houston, um, and then uh, the the Sherwood Forest Fair, uh, they do that over New Bronzeville's, I believe, and that's every spring. And so uh, the Sherwood Forest Fair is supposed to be kind of like a 1974. Okay, 1974 was TRF, yeah, and Sherwood Forest Fair uh, just started up uh, a couple of decades ago, so um, sometime during the 2000s. But yeah, uh, tons of fun. Uh, favorite thing to do there is go to the mud show. Been going there every single time. It's basically three old guys tromping around in a giant puddle of mud, uh, quoting Shakespeare. So uh, it's it's good stuff. It's oh, it's, fun. it's very good stuff. An original the, show. Ooh, What's that? Yeah, we go to the Oklahoma Ren Fair uh, every every spring as well. So that's why I was asking. Yeah. I didn't know if it was traveling or if it was close by. Houston's about no, eight no. hours away, so that might be a little bit more of a difficult like weekend trip. Yeah, I've uh, let's see, I've been to four different Ren fairs in my life. Uh, of course, the Texas Renaissance Festival. I've been to the the Maryland Renaissance Festival. Mm -hmm. That's a good. One. Uh, the one that they ha that is a very good one. Uh, the one that they have over in Pennsylvania, which is also a very good one. Uh, they had pyrotechnics during their uh, uh, during their their uh, joust, or were they jousting? The yes, penises? they're. No, it's a lance. <laughs> Thank you. They're it's a lance metaphor, Johnsons. Okay, it's They're not lance literal. <laughs> uh, I have a friend named that, oddly enough. Um, but <laughs> I don't know if I he watches the show dick. or not, but he's not actually. He's a really nice guy. <laughs> he's a really nice guy uh, with a beautiful family. Uh, no, but uh, so, anyways. Um, and then lastly, I've been to the Midwalk, uh, the Midwalk Fest uh, over in uh, uh, Frankfurt. I think it was. Was it Frankfurt, sweetie? Yeah, it was Frankfurt, I think. Nice. Uh, but that was over in Germany. And so whenever it comes down to like Ren Fairs, like Texas Ren Fair, you walk in, you're wearing, you know, like, you know, leather vest and like, you know, Japanese boots and you have like, you know, some sort of weird something like basically things that don't necessarily make sense for the period. Mm -hmm. Well, the Germans, they are very, very, very strict about what they call <laughs> period dress. Like you're either walking barefoot or you got wooden fucking shoes. And if you have neither, then you don't get a discount for being in costume. <laughs> like they are very strict about that. Um, but yeah, that's uh, that's my week. Not to talk too much about it because I want to get to the main meat, the main man of the uh, of this uh, no, I session. I think you need to say no ditty there, buddy. No ditty. There you go. Um, uh, and uh, let's pass this on to Hunter. Hunter, what has your week been, Mike? 
All right. Uh, took the family to go see Transformers 1. Uh, have, have any of you guys watched it yet? No. Okay. Ooh. Surprisingly entertaining. Obviously, we went to go see it because I have tiny children, uh, and also Transformers are dope. But um, there's really no character growth for anyone in the film, which I was kind of bummed about at first. But then I thought about it, and I was like, you know, you really already know all the Autobots and they're all cool. No matter what happens in this film, you're going to be rooting for them anyway so it really didn't matter. And the only character that got any form of growth or really saw any progression was Megatron. And by the end of the film, I was back in the dude. I understood his logic. I got why he turned evil and I'm like, yeah, you know I could be tempted. I could be <laughs> I, I kind of get it. I see why he ended up the way he did. Like, it was really cool. I, I thought they did, did a really good job. Did he transform into a literal gun, though? That's the question. No. In this film, he transformed tank. into a tank. Yep. Yeah. That, a couple different versions of it. America's Megatron, gun. Well, no. Mer Megatron has been a gun or has been a tank since Gen 2. And I think it was because they wanted to get away from it being a, you know, a replica pistol. Handgun. Yeah. That star, like star scream shoot. Well, yeah. what's, what's even funnier about it too is they based him off a World War II um, Nazi officer pistol. So it was the uh, Walther P thirty seven, which was usually carried by German officers in the Nazi Party. <laughs> well, evil guy, evil gun makes sense. That, yeah. Uh, yeah. So that was good. Really enjoyed it. Uh, whenever it comes out, I recommend you guys watch it. It was it was definitely worth a watch. Um, and then I started playing Dragon Ball Sparking Zero tonight. Ooh, uh, the is wife it? is out at a painting event and I got the kiddos to bed early. Nice. It does definitely play like the old Budokai games, which is fun. Uh, but also I don't remember the controls yet. So it's really frustrating because everybody just seems to be jumping around the screen, which is good when you know what you're doing, but when you're not, it's just really annoying because it's, it's just, it's just visual salad for the eyes like you don't you can't really tell what's going on do you have to unlock uh, characters or are is oh yeah okay oh yeah oh so so like I, story I like unlock that. or buy points unlock that's the part that's kind of weird so it's by story for the most part but the story is very disconnected so you can play through chapters of the sagas from one character's perspective and okay. you start with goku but you're going through and you're only interacting at the story at the points where goku was at the event oh interesting so you're skipping okay. tons and tons of story through each saga and then you've got to go back through with vegeta and play through with him or mm. go back through with gohan or piccolo and there's only eight con i gotta, I gotta move the cat out of here before you go to the cat <laughs> uh he was going right in front of everything uh so, so far it's interesting, but like I said, I've only got to play it for like an hour, hour and a half or so. Um, how, so how do you only unlock it? characters that you interact with then? No. So I like your like, opponents you know, or your allies and stuff? Uh, I haven't quite figured that out. Like I know you unlock different uh, outfits for characters as you're going through the story because you get their outfit from that specific saga and everything. But I haven't played through to try to figure out how do I unlock specific characters or anything. Because like I said, I'm only like an hour into the game. But from okay. what I can That's tell... What I was thinking it was like a, some sort of branching narrative where it's like, mm -hmm. okay, I've touched all these characters, you know, six separ uh, six separations of Vegeta, and, you know, that's how you f get your roster. You yeah. Know? And from what I gather, that's how I've unlocked the different, uh, like... Uh, stages of goku throughout the story of like super saiyan one two three so far uh but other than that i'm not sure because i haven't played anything else other than just goku's portion of the story so far i'm just saying what uh, sold me on that is omega shenron is a playable character uh, yeah, he was in really? the trailer and i was like 88 yes. playable characters what was that 188 playable characters yeah, out of the box and there's another 20 coming in the first dlc yeah it's a big roster so this is uh, the jojo's bizarre adventures for dragon ball z pretty much basically nice yeah. That and makes me moist. <laughs> oh, mm, don't yeah, use yes. moist. And much like Mr. Glenn and his news, um, I also have been cast in a Scyther audio drama uh, to play a highly decorated uh, military officer uh, tasked to be over uh, Task Force X and manage the criminals in a, a secret government, I guess you can call them Hit Squad, uh, known as the Suicide Squad, for the Justice League series. I am Rick Flag. <laughs> nice. Congrats. And we're co-stars. <laughs> what? Okay. I'm curious. Uh, what, can you give us a sample of your Rick Flag? No, you have to watch the series. 
Is it? Oh, nice. When does it, it come out? We are doing lines right now. I'm not sure when it's actually supposed to drop, uh, but I can tell you that I do close out episode one. Ooh. Mm. Uh, yes. So. I, I understand it. A lot of the stuff is being delayed by the weather as well because of all sense. the hurricanes and stuff. So yeah. yeah. So that might cause a people live real lives, you know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. uh, and I have a special item that I have teased y'all with for a couple of weeks now that I will go ahead and bring forward to the camera so you can see it, maybe. Bella, oh, you fucking oh, didn't. come on, dude. You did I not. Did. I did. Come Is that on. fucking bath water, bro? You bought her bath water? <laughs> so, unfortunately, uh, let's see, well, there it goes. Uh, it is a keycap. Uh, only one in five came with actual bath water in it, and it was on sale for half off, so I couldn't not buy it. <laughs> did yours have bath water in it? This one did not have bath oh, water, and I was dang. sad. Oh, thank God, uh, dude. You're going to catch something with that. That's <laughs> but I could not, I could not <laughs> stop myself fucking, from buying it when like, I saw it was half off. Dude. Get oh, like the, the super black pink man. eye. Oh. It's like... <laughs> you was going to drink it. Damn. <laughs> You didn't keep it on. See, Rico's puzzle. more more along the lines of where I'm at. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that's uh, that 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 now adorns uh, the escape button on my keyboard, oh my and it will for all time. <laughs> oh my god, that is so Wait, damn. Wait, are you are you sure that it, it it doesn't contain any samples from that bathwater? Because I mean, it could just be an air biscuit they captured during the process. <laughs> just saying, I got to crack it open and take a whiff. <laughs> no, it, it smells no. like strawberries. And frijoles. Oh, oh it smells God. like OnlyFans. <laughs> Tier three subbing. Yeah, no. so uh, I'm sure there was probably more to my week, but those are definitely the highlights. And I'm very much looking forward to uh, to, to, to being part of the, the audio drama. It's going to be a ton of fun. I keep looking for roles on the uh, Talkies channel as well when they mm. pop up, but... Previously, it was so hard to try to go through and figure out what roles are open and what scripts are still available that I kept missing it every time. But now that they seem to have cleaned that up some, you know, hopefully I'll, I'll, I'll be on one of those episodes pretty shortly. Yeah. Uh, it seems that we have two two people that have been on talkies <laughs> so far, as I'm sure that somebody is going to tell us soon. But not right now, because nobody cares about him. So instead, <gasps> I'm going to hand uh, over... What? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. It's me, Rico. Uh, so my week was pretty good, pretty good. Still recovering from that band competition. Uh, even though Hunter, I love his support. He's like, we get it. You don't like band. You hate kids. You hate people. <laughs> uh, just know that hey, if you did if you did band in high school, I give you credit. I give your parents credit if they did it because I drove two hours and ten minutes to go support my daughter in the band competition. For an eight-minute performance, mm. so despite all the yeah. discs, sounds like my it was Friday night. <laughs> Mark, <laughs> band of champions. So uh, to make it quick, uh, my my wife is the president of the booster club. Um, so again, I got roped in because I got to drive everybody and you know catch the bus. So we've been up since five o'clock. We drove to James Madison, James Madison University. Mm-hmm. Um, Truth be told, it was disorganized, it, which kind of irked me coming from military and how I grew up too, where I'm like, this is like a shit show. Uh, like, I don't like this. Like, where's everybody at? Um, but we got the kids squared away. But literally, you're walking, you're walking slash running to set up the instruments and podium. They do an eight minute performance. And by the time you pick up your stuff and you're leaving, there's another band coming mm-hmm. through. Um, so we left around three, but we had to be back at the high school at 1.30 in the morning. Because they stayed for the competition, the awards. So I didn't get to bed till 4 o'clock in the morning Oof. on Sunday. And then I had to go to work the next day. Oof. And I was like, I was like that close. I was like, I think I'm going to have to call in. I was like, nah, I can't do that. I got, some, I got stuff to do. And I don't want to be behind work. Because that's what wow. a man fucking does. Good job, Rico. Yeah. I drank a lot of coffee. And then <laughs> drunk plenty of Red Bulls. I even drove with one of my old chiefs that now is a civilian where I'm like, it's how you feeling? I said, dude, I was this close from calling in. I said, you like I love you guys. Because I'm like, nah, I wouldn't have done it today. But other than that, uh, since mentioning the voice acting, uh, if you guys want to, if you guys did, I did. So I tried the talkie radio thing. I did mm-hmm. three voices for the Brainiac Boring Nerd. That shit was hilarious. I was cracking myself up. 
Uh, but I got kudos on my voice too. So if you want to laugh and make fun of me in the next podcast, go to the talkie radio in the auditions. You'll see three that I posted on that one. So um, I liked it because they gave real quick feedback too from mm-hmm. how to set up your you know makeshift studio. There was one person chiming in on you know for for us you know saying you got some life issues, but the person giving the information wasn't like um, what do you call it brushing them off. There was giving them good good ideas. Good things, trying to big them up, say, hey, stuff happens, but hey, you know, let us know what you need to do on that part. So that actually was fun. Uh, Reading Happy, the graphic novel, it actually is pretty good. Mm -hmm. Um, I understand why the guy who, well, for those who don't know about Happy, it's basically about an ex-cop who has a heart attack, starts seeing a cartoon flying unicorn. So think of like Roger Rabbit kind of of thing, because they did two different types of styles. Um... But he's recruited to save a, a young girl who's been kidnapped for some reasons, and so you see why he, why he, why he's in the position he's in. Um, which, when I thought about it, if you ever watch Law and Order SVU, the guy who plays Stabler actually plays um, Happy. Mm-hmm. Well, not Happy. He plays the cop Nick Sachs in the show, and it kind of. Pl- if you watch SVU, which I watched a couple of seasons, there's a couple of parts where his character loses it. Like, you know, roughing up the suspect to taking the work home. So it kind of relates to the character that he is in the graphic novel. But um, so far, so good. Hopefully, I'll finish it by next week, and I'll give you a full rundown on that. Nice. The Penguin. Has, has anybody watched The Penguin? I haven't watched it yet. I've been You're so busy. Out. I've been meaning to. I, <laughs> I was just saying this. I didn't expect The Penguin, in my opinion, The Penguin to be like this. Like, episode three is so much shit going on from Double Cross and Blackmail to one guy I feel bad for where he's trying to figure out where he wants to go for as his old life and the new life. Old life is with his girlfriend, which is basically his only thing he has in the past. New life is getting like $1,000 a week from the Penguin to help do him do stuff, uh, from burying bodies to do that stuff. So um, really getting interesting on how they're, how they're how the alliances are pairing up. Uh, especially with the double cross. Uh, Agatha All Along, episode 5 went out. I don't know if you guys are watching that. I'm going to wait till it's finished. Decent. Pretty decent. Um, this one was a little bit, this one was a little bit, be- a little bit better. They actually rode um, makeshift broomsticks. <laughs> okay. Um, when they get chased. So it was, a weird, it was kind of a funny little, little thing they did about the only way to ride your broomstick is basically you got to pair with somebody and then do like an attachment while you circle around and then boom. <laughs> You're off like Hogwarts and just racing across the stars. So, um, more truth gets laid out. Uh, but right now, it seems like I feel like the theme is everybody's going to die. Like, nobody is safe, uh, except for maybe Agatha. But as she embraces her past or confronts it, you see more of it. Um, and then a new truth was I'm not going to spoil it, but there's a new truth at the end that was revealed that everybody thought was going to happen on that one. Um, Uz- Uzumaki. Episode 2 came out. I um, heard some rough things about Episode 2. Animation was trash. Ooh. So, far as me not reading not reading this stuff, I thought it was great. I just had a lot of what-the-hell moments. Because, this, again, I, I feel like when we talk about these media, we have the privilege of, again, you're reading it, you're, you're playing it as a video game, if it's a player. So there's a lot of things where you're like, leave the town. You done saw your mm-hmm. dad. You find your dad in a spiral in a bathtub. Your mom's in the hospital. Can you transfer to another hospital? Does Medicaid cover it? Does Medicare? <laughs> How much it cost? Can you leave her there and somebody can be a relative can take care of them? Because there's a lot of weird shits going on um, to the point where I'm like, yeah, there's no, it's no way I'm, I'm staying. Like it's, it's just funny on that part. But um, with the new episode, you see a couple more things are happening. From it's just the I would say of the series. It's the weirdness of how people accept it because there's at least three individuals. Well, hold on. Did anybody not watch it or I read the manual? I don't want to ruin it. I haven't watched it. At all. I haven't watched it. I had to Google what we were talking about, <laughs> and the first article I found would instantly trigger Nick because it says the Uzumaki anime is already a bigger failure than Berserk. Damn. No, he's. They're actually Damn. not wrong because Berserk 2016 was fucking garbage. So since I don't have bias, mm-hmm. I actually think it's. It's pretty good. It's just okay. a lot of weird shit going on uh, in that one. Again, they have like a cl- they have at least one classmate that turns into a snail 
Mm-hmm. And nobody, they're bothered by it, but nobody's leaving the school. <laughs> this junk is like in the building. I'm like, uh, this is a meme with the no dog in the room that's on fire. It's like, mm, this is okay. Yeah. <laughs> like you have a Romeo and Juliet thing that goes about. You have a lighthouse that burns people. You have Medusa hair. Everybody's staying around while the Medusa hair is like this. There's a Medusa hair fight. And everybody's <laughs> like standing around. And I'm like, I'm gone. Like, I don't care. I'm like, we're breaking up. Your hair, I'm breaking up because your hair. I just don't. It just, again, goes back, it goes back to the depression and uh, the theory I have and the attention that comes with it as, as people will like, it's like a tug and pull kind of thing. Um, all I'll say is like, with it, just a sense of urgency to leave, uh, but people don't want to leave. It's not that they can't, they just don't want to leave. Did you notice during that episode how people were like, trying, whenever they were trying to get home, where they're trying to leave on the train, how they were walking in circles? Yeah. I wonder if that may be part of it, why they can't leave. Mm. You just could be like it brain could be a side effect if you try to go. Like I felt like with the spiraling around could be possibly how if you're so caught up in your life between work, work, home life, whatever, it's like you you be an accountant spiral without you know alleviating yourself and relaxing. But that is a good theory. Like maybe if you try to we leave, we can we can probably talk more about this next week to yep. to delve back because there's there's a lot of fun stuff with that. So moving on, Destiny Two. As far as games, I played Destiny Two. The new episode came out. Basically, it's they introduced some tonics, so portions. So basically, if you play any game with Diablo now, you can make potions for your armor, nice stuff like okay. that. Um, onslaught, Space Marines Two. I got back into it. Um. I like it so far. Again, bias. I never dealt with uh, Warhammer. Uh, the only thing that was frustrating, and I don't know if Nico remembers, the the rippers, the rat-looking things, yeah. whatever. That shit was pissing me off. That's even good. though I was playing on a hard difficulty, um, mainly because the Terrans were fighting me. But um, that's pretty much it for gaming. Just trying to finish up. Hopefully this weekend. Uh, unfortunately, Hunter may not like this, but the next level we got to recognize Doc Harris. Um, he was a DBZ narrator mm-hmm. for the series. That is 76, unfortunately, after a minor surgery. So yeah, it's amazing how his career, where he went from radio DJ to voice acting. But he also was in um, other video games, Monster Rancher, Eat Man 98, Sister Blue, Agus Defenders. Um, and that pretty much sums up my week. It was a fun week, exhausting, but... I unfortunately will hand it off to Nico to end this. <laughs> you all suck. I wish I could skip you. I wish I could skip him and go straight to James. But <laughs> well, we can skip him for a second because I did forget one thing. Okay. Uh, be- because I no longer have uh, my OnlyFans subscription to tease you all with. Um, Mr. Glenn did make a suggestion to me about a week and a half ago or so now about a potential costume that I should consider. Uh, and I sent him a teaser image of a professional cosplay costume that I picked up today specifically to meet the demand of this request. So our Halloween-themed episode that we're going to have at the end of the month, y'all need to step it up. <laughs> oh my god, okay. It's. I'm just going to say Hunter is bringing his S-rank game. Not even A game, it's like... This is a role that he's probably been born for, so much so that there's already people who have already done this before. Like, like people, he, they have suggestions for it. it, it it's, it's sorry, it's blown my mind. Okay, whatever, well, whatever not, that suggestion was out there. It's not Dante. I go. I'm sure of that. The mullet right. is going to be a key part of the, the costume. Mu- the just so we're key just throw all on the same page. Joe Dirt? I don't know. Uh, it's very of an air, but it's not Joe Dirt. Okay. Y'all got to tune in on, on Halloween. It's going to be great. The, oh, holy shit. Is it Aquaman? No. Okay. Just double checking. You're getting warmer, though. <laughs> shit. All right. Uh, f- fuck mullet. And t- the only thing I can think of is 90s Superman when he came back after uh, death and, uh, when he was reborn. He had a mullet. But You're just gonna have to wait to find out. It's gonna be amazing. Yeah. Okay. Uh, my week was pretty simple. I played some video games. Kind of. I played a little more Space Marine. Still pretty fun. Um, 
played a lot more digital tamer. I figured out kind of what I was looking for to evolve into Duke to get my dude Duke Mon. So now I just have to grind. So there's there's that. Um, Is Duke Mon's the poop Pokemon, right? Or no, no, du uh, Duke Mon's the 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 knight with the lance and the shield. I figured I, I told Lehan the moment I get to Duke Mon, I'm done with the game. So I I want to be done with this game. <laughs> getting so sick of it um i joined up on glenn's recommendation to the uh talky radio show uh i got two parts uh so i am the farmer for um what the what was the name of it, it it's it's a really good name too anyway i'm gonna be playing the farmer in that uh, it was a little short one, and then there's. I don't. Are we allowed to talk about it? I'm. I'm sure that that that. Uh, I mean, the information's already out there for folks. Um, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Just go for it. Uh, I'm gonna play. I'm, I'm producer on the show. You know what? I give you permission. Okay. Uh, yes, yeah, so I, I play <laughs> can of soup. It, it was a very very fun role. I pulled out all of my anime protagonist, like whiny anime protagonist. Um, knowledge and used it to fuel my voice acting role. Um, the saddest <laughs> story that we will probably have this season. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a really it's an odd story, uh, but no, it was, it was it was fun. It was fun. Um, Something else that we learned, James, is that you do not want him to write any stories for you. <laughs> um, oh yeah, I got. They, uh, they are a little unhinged. Apparently it was a little too risque. Uh, it was my fault. Too risque. It was a little risque. You, you were you were talking about blasting somebody's <coughs> cheeks with with with. No, no, stuff. that was the clown song. That was something entirely different. Okay, so I wrote oh, a song about yeah. a, a clown. Well, now you're following along. <laughs> yeah, I wrote a song about a clown, and uh, it was, it's called. It's already going bad. And not what you yep. not what you think oh, he's yeah. going to be blasting nope. the cheeks with either. <laughs> So I wrote a song called Clown School, A Love Story, and it's about oh. a man who has a fetish for gassy clowns. Let's just – that should give you the uh, the bar that we set with the song. Um, but you have it so high up, you can raise it down. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, well, the problem I, yeah. is the ceiling's up there. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. what I actually got that was too risque uh, was I wrote – I tried to I write a before. script for the show, and it ended up being too vulgar. And after it was explained to me why the there was a problem with chat it, I was afterwards like, I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> <laughs> so it was pretty much like it, it was a, it was kind of my, my idea originally was what if Skeletor ran a used car, like a used car lot in Eternia? Okay. But due to copyright reasons, I had to change it up. So it ended up being Mr. Boner's used wild rides. And then I ended up doing sex jokes for all the cars, like the names of the cars. Uh, Honda Licky. What was that? Honda Licky. <laughs> yup. <laughs> oh, it's it's stupid juvenile humor. It was fun to write. Uh, and then Mr. Bones, I had as a um, like a necromancer, or like a really strong sort like lich, because he was like, at one point he was like. He was like terrorizing an Australian, like the Australian actor they hired for the show. He was like, I'll disembowel you and scatter your remains throughout the multiverse. Just dumb shit like that. So it was like, if it, like how this guy gets kidnapped and turned into a giant monster pretty much. Uh, and then that was the end of the little advert. It's almost like a TV commercial. But yeah, it was, it was deemed a little, uh, little, little too much. I misread the room a bit. Let's just put it that way. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> a bit. Just, just a bit. That was all. No big deal. Exactly. God. Um, aside from that, didn't really watch any TV. Didn't watch any movies. Uh, I did, however, pick up two things. Uh, Faith by New Blood. Uh, New Blood just came out on consoles today. So that just came out on the Switch. It's on sale for like thirteen ninety nine. Highly recommend it. Um, the other. <laughs> the other is I picked up the Silent Hill Two remake. And I'm going to attempt to try and play a little bit of that tonight. But from what I've seen of the first 10 minutes, it is pretty solid so far. And 
Akira Yamaoka hasn't made us to beat because the soundtrack is just fucking mwah, so good. And that's my week. So now we get into the man of the hour. The main event. The main event. So since you've been gooning so hard, Glenn, how about you go ahead and uh, start us off here? Ugh. So, <laughs> so James, so James, as your as your biggest fan, <laughs> uh, as you can tell by him just hunching forward. Yeah. Oh my god! Yeah, he's like he's getting he's actually getting giddy. Yeah, like that. Yeah. Oh my god! He notices me. <laughs> Senpai knows my name. Uh, no. <laughs> so, oh um. God. Let's let's lay out um, first of all, just like the 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 different projects we're working with, and what are the projects that you have on your plate uh, for this this mad schedule that you're running for yourself, and uh, just kind of like to lay out the basics. Uh, so, um, for the the uh, for the so you know how about this? I'll give you some exposition. How about that? Is that okay? How about we? Okay. Okay. All right. So, um, so James has Everyone this spectacular idea. Talk. No. <laughs> <laughs> James has a spectacular idea that he came up with uh, for for the World of Darkness, which is a low fantasy uh, role playing game where um, you know vampires, werewolves, mages, fairies, all those exist. They're just uh, something that. Excuse me, gentlemen. Uh, <laughs> they're just like. <laughs> You know, hiding themselves, or people don't have the ability to to see them, or there's ways that that reality does things in order to make people forget. Um, and it's kind of built into the the concept of the game. Um, and so uh, most of the the games take place in the modern times, um, starting from somewhere in the uh, early '80s. James, is that right? Or late '80s? Late '80s for World of Darkness. Hello. More like it's nineties. It's nineties, early nineties. Yeah, it was like yeah. So in the early nineties, whenever they first started dropping this stuff, so it's definitely has like this this dark like punk uh, noir sort of feel to it uh, for a lot of the stuff. Um, uh, the some of the things that people are may associate with this uh, particular uh, universe is Vampire the Masquerade, which famously had. Uh, a video game called Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines, uh, Vampire the Masquerade Requiem, uh, several other uh, uh, text-based adventures that are currently on Steam, stuff like that. Um, with uh, I, I think Bloodlines being like more or less the, the the king of them all. But all that was based off of the book series uh, that was that has several source books that are attached to them. Um, and, and then they included uh, werewolves uh, for Werewolf of the Apocalypse. And the story of the guardians of uh, Gaia, who is the Earth Spirit. Um, and if there and are any uh, PS2 fans out there, you had Hunter the Reckoning, which was one of the best. Yes, Diablo Hunter the Reckoning is the also. PS2. Yes, that is also inside this universe, um, and it's basically the humans who have been viewed by by um, the 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 messengers or the Watchers. In order to, or the heralds, I should probably say, the heralds is what they're called, in order to fight against the things that go bump of the night, um, and uh, so on and so forth. So, like, there's a lot of strange, crazy, supernatural stuff. It's really great. Um, so, James had this great idea uh, with something that was called uh, World of Darkness Underground Railroad. And it basically takes place uh, in the lead up to the Civil War um, and surrounding the the concept of the uh united states uh during that time and the supernatural influences on, on it so if that's the I, I think that's the first thing i kind of want to speak about uh maybe you can say it better than i james is abe lincoln a vampire hunter <laughs> that in my head that, my so that was a suggestion actually given to me was to make sure i read that book because it it actually really is pretty good um when it it's comes a to what book, I want to horrible say. movie. Yes. Very bad movie. Very bad movie. <laughs> that, but, yeah, um, inspiration. Which is a, which is another one that I didn't get yet, but they have um Harriet Tugman Demon Slayer. What? <laughs> That's hanging out with the Winchesters. All right. Awesome. 
She, the, most of the images are her with like samurai swords. I'm like, <laughs> I, think, I think I'm gonna, I think this became my hero. Yeah, right. <laughs> so they, they have a couple of those. Um, so thinking about like this world of darkness environment, um, the one thing I've definitely noticed about all of the world of darkness franchise is, is really like a historical fiction. They always like to kind of follow some level of our natural history and they go, hey, we don't know what happened here or this area is left blank. And they decide, you know what we'll do? How do we fit a werewolf in there? Or how do we fit a vampire in there? And so a lot of times in the story in itself, you'll find that we will be in the middle of Germany before a great war and all of a sudden, the werewolves have decided that they are the best race to do the job of protecting Gaia. And then you go, and they feel that everything else is beneath them and they should wipe them all out. And then you're like, wait, did you just say that the werewolves were Nazis? Yeah. You didn't. But no, but they... it's interesting though because in most, um, in most like uh, fantasy World War II stories, the Nazis always had like their SS uh, officers would be like werewolves or something. So that was um was it American Werewolf in Paris had the werewolf Nazis didn't it? Mm. Well, Grimm, okay. if you remember the show Grimm, mm -hmm. some of those guys, as far as that, the far as some of the werewolves and some of the other creatures, the bad ones were part of the Nazi. Yep. I think Hitler was some type of werewolf or some type of hyena or some type of thing mm -hmm. um, with the coins. Interesting the though. Like so yeah, they 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 do that a lot. So mm -hmm. a lot of times, whether they. And they put them on either side. Um, so, like, for me, the thing that got me initially interested in that really cemented me liking how World of Darkness worked was actually Kindred the Embraced. And that was actually a television show where they kind of basically... Kindred the Embraced is actually a White Wolf um, production. And they basically talked about the uh, vampires running amok in the city. And a lot of people don't realize that that kind of has that link in there. Um, and they, it, it looks like we're just talking about politics in the city. And then all of a sudden it's like, oh, there's vampires. <laughs> yeah. and, off. Um, and that's kind of a lot of how World of Darkness plays out. Um, what drove me to think about the Underground Railroad is one, it's one of my favorite multicultural historical events that... Um, I just enjoy that concept as a whole. And the world of darkness pull in there is they just don't really do that. I mean, when you go to world of darkness, they're definitely going to talk about Europe. You might get something on Japan or Asia. And then they did a wild west. They did a whole thing with blood dim ties. We're under the ocean. And I was like, you know, they really don't have any real U.S. history. And also with that, they the only time they bring up cultures is like Africa, Asia, Europe. Mm. And then everywhere else is kind of like, yeah, they're there. Just make it up, make your own story. Or every so often they'll make, like, vampires very city-oriented. So they'll go, oh, they're in this city or this location. So I noticed that there really wasn't any sort of set setting that was a hundred percent in the U.S. and it talked about African American culture. So I was like, "Hey, this is a great window to do that." Um, and what's also nice is there's no such thing as good guys or bad guys. It's just point of view. So every vampire, werewolf, changeling, demon, pick your poison, race, and everything could be on some side of the coin. And then the real question is, is are they helping or hurting? Because in the end of the whole White Wolf franchise, they're just people taking actions so they can either be helpful or hurtful. So it's more, would you say, it, so in that, in that vein, it's more, it's more a question of morals and ethics than anything else. Or at least Correct. one person's view of, I'm a werewolf, this is the betterment, this is the better progress for our species or our way of life. We'll go in that versus anything somebody can associate with being political or something like that. Yes, it, it is. It's a hundred percent point of view. And a lot of the times they do kind of 
paint a picture. So, great example, there's at least two tribes of werewolves that are 100% Native American. So they are going to see the world as Native Americans. Mm. Um, there are definitely some bloodlines of vampires that are 100% European, and most of their line is European. So they may have a point of view with that. And then there's a whole bunch of other ones that it's all kind of wishy-washy. We get who we get. And mm. um, it just kind of depends on the circumstances. So, like, werewolves are born, vampires are bitten. So how do you, yeah. you know, some somebody's point of view can end up seeping in there, and it can be on one side or the other. No. So no vampire. Right. And so there's also, like, I mean, just, like, you know, overall, like, ethics and morals that certain subsects of that of those societies hold but still you know there's there's mutable characteristics of individuals in each one so i mean you could even have people that belong to the same tribe belong to the same clan belong to the same uh magical tradition that uh understand the supernatural world in a certain way but believe completely different things mm -hmm. Yeah. So real quick, real quick question on the vampires. You mentioned that they're bitten. So no vampires in the series are born. No, no, they are Vamp created. They are they are weeded out and picked out. So um, pretty much all of World of Darkness it follows the same kind of motif. You start off as one thing. You have some sort of cataclysmic life transaction, and then you end up something else. Vampires, race, uh, mummies, almost all of them, they have a death. So with vampires, most of the time the individual may have been stalked or groomed for, for their particular bloodline or clan. And then when they are bitten, they kind of like follow suit. So if you're, let's use the example of a bruja, the likelihood is you're a mobster, a thug. Uh, your life already sets you up to be that kind of person. And they kind of embrace you into a little bit of what you were doing already. So then how does one so become the, a Malkavian? The Bruja. So they're crazy. <laughs> or they're so sane that it, it borders on insanity. insanity. Okay. <laughs> right. <laughs> so whenever we talk about uh, Bruja and Malkavian, those are two... Uh, clans of vampires where Bruja are these, you know, uh, physical, physically proud, uh, uh, these very strong vampires that believe in in physicality and and uh, gain their strength from just being superhuman uh, beyond their kin. Uh, whereas Malkavians have the ability to uh, see things and understand things that people wouldn't typically see because they're neurodivergent. Yeah. So, yeah. And it just kind of basically vampire takes all these things that you may already have and kind of turns it to 11. Yeah. So it might sound like you need to have a doctorate's degree in the English language to play this game, but rest assured my dumbass was able to play it. If, Hey, I went to public school in the South. <laughs> so the way I see it is, I mean, I was able to bubble in the bubble sheets and play the character just fine. Because mm -hmm. um, you don't even have to write down numbers. You bubble shit. Yep. So if I can do a Scantron. Anybody can do a Scantron. Can you, so, can you take a brief second and explain the bubble thing? Oh. Or I'm, I'm, I'm only done D&D &D a little bit because somebody introduced me into that world and then they abandoned me in it. Oh. Um Every time, do you know, understand? Yeah. We go, we gonna make a shirt. Yeah, we gonna make a shirt. Yeah. Do you mind if I give a quick explanation? Essentially, um, the 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 way the system works is that you have a pool of dice that is typically determined by two different attributes. So you may have your your the attributes that are you, and then some sort of skill attribute, right, or supernatural ability that you mm -hmm. you take two of these pools. You mash them together and the whatever amount of dice that is. So like let's say that, you know, with like two dots in any any base attribute. So that's gonna be like your strength, your uh dexterity, your uh let me help uh, you out toughness. A bit, <laughs> go for it. Yeah, go for it. All right. So let's follow what Glenn is saying. So 
you have like your attributes. So that's going to be things like, like kind of like on your D&D sheet. So it's going to be your strength, your stamina, your dexterity, um, mm -hmm. things like that. Those are going to have something that's mental, something that's social, something that's physical. So using Glenn's example, let's say you just want to drive down the street. Driving down the street, you maybe want to use your dexterity to turn the steering wheel. And then you might want to do something crazy while you're driving. So you would use drive and dexterity. You would mix some level of attribute with some level of skill. And you would put them together and that would compose your dice roll. And as you get successes, which this game is kind of built around a D10, as you get successes, it tells you how well you did that skill. So in terms of successes, it's gonna be like if you you meet a certain threshold on the on the dice that you roll. So in the old world of darkness, it's like you know six. If you roll a six or better, but things that are harder, maybe an eight difficulty or better, right? So your difficulty right. is your DC, and then so whatever dice that you get above that that difficulty number, that is considered a success. And so three successes is your like standard success condition you know two successes one success is you barely did it and then much more than three is like oh my god you did it with such proficiency that it's almost inhuman gotcha. mechanically so, speaking yeah. it's take your take like your strength stat and dungeon dragons like all your basic uh, character stats instead of rolling them out as a and then using that number for a for a dot based system you would just you would tally your score and like you'd one is one dot, if that makes So it's like one point is one dot. So two is average for the attributes, and one would be like somebody who's weaker, and then somebody with zero is like a disability. So, and then or five is like the best that. in the world. But the nice thing about what I actually loved about World of Darkness is World of Darkness was definitely built around storytelling. So great example with that same drive thing, Drive, if you are just trying to drive a car mm -hmm. and you have a five and drive and it says you can drive everything that you get behind, mm -hmm. we don't have to roll that. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. It, it just it, it says, well, you're an expert driver. Yes, yeah, so just, just ignore drive. it. Assume that they're going to be fine. Just, just drive the yeah, car. So, so like but, in the movies where you have the hero and they jump into whatever vehicle and they're like, you know how to drive this? I drove a, I think so. Beep, 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 yeah, beep, 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 Okay, hey Nico, uh, Nico, yeah. James, James is talking. He is the guest. I I need lists from him. I need to hear that sweet baritone. <laughs> like Glenn said. Well, actually, I'm gonna go ahead and squirrel us off topic really quick because my wife just got home and I'm gonna brag on her real quick because uh, she was at a a a paint and sip tonight and this was the painting that she did and and brought home for me. Oh yeah. In case the quality isn't quite clear enough, that is in fact Darth Vader standing in front of Tatooine mid explosion. That is awesome. Oh. I approve. And this was after Hot. multiple alcoholic beverages. <laughs> this is bullshit. I can't even do a stick figure when I'm sober. <laughs> I'm telling you, man, do the planet art. That's how. That's how you get. That's how you do it. Yeah, but she did the planet art correctly. She she didn't yeah. use bowls like you do. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I guess uh, another question I'm going to have for you, James. Um, so uh, regarding uh, the second project we're working on, uh, the Spirit Project. Mm -hmm. uh the the omnibus um you want to tell us a little more about that the spirit project yeah sure so there are a lot of i guess the best way to put it um there's like a lot of data in what world of darkness about spirits um there's a lot of interactions in the game with um whether it be werewolves or mages or changelings there's a lot of races that interact with spirits and a lot of times they weren't really flushed out. They kind of just said, we will give them four stats and hope for the best. Mm. Um, and there's so many, um, there's so many transactions with them, whether you're a werewolf trying to get your 
gifts or you have a patron spirit that um, kind of aids you through your journey of defending Gaia. I mean, that's still a spirit. The concept of a true fae or true fairy, their spirit. You know, there's a lot of things from angels to jinn to gods are all spirits. And they just weren't really flushed out to my liking. Because every book you picked up, there was no telling what solution or answer they would give. But no matter what book you pick up, a mage is a mage, a vampire is a vampire. Mm. So a race, now, a quick question: um, Is this a is this going to be an officially licensed uh, kind of uh, source book? So I don't know yet. Okay. Um, it, it was an idea that I was running through. Um, I I realized that White Wolf loves when fans make things. Mm -hmm. um, well, I don't think they're White Wolf anymore. I think there's White Wolf, Paradox, Renegade, Onyx Path. There's a whole bunch of companies right now that have some bits and pieces <laughs> of um, the World of Darkness um, franchise. Um, don't really know. Um, it's definitely something that I definitely wanted to try. Um, I know that I have already communicated with... Um, paradox about some of the projects that i had on my mind and they were like yeah man make it okay. <laughs> so they're cool with it but that was then this is now i definitely want to make sure that that is still on the docket okay now what um what gave you the inspiration to do this um i was it was i've, I've always kind of liked this game system um it was just one that really spoke to me. Um, it really started with the card games. Um, not so much that I played the card games first. Um, actually, the first time I played a World of Darkness game was in 1994 when I was in high school. Um, and somebody brought in Mage the Ascension. And they completely blew the rules. They totally did them. I don't know what they did, but they didn't know how to read the book. And... It was the first um, role-playing game that I understood because a lot of times in role-playing games, they want you to think of some medieval setting. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I'm not going to talk in thous and this is. I mean, I barely know what's happening in the world I'm in right now. There's no reason for me to dig up the past. So I really um, connected with it being uh, current time. How? That, that is a, that is a thick boy book. of a rule book. That's a, I yeah. think that's the twentieth one, isn't it? That is the twentieth anniversary edition yeah, of the So century. how many? Okay, so here's the real question: How many pages are just rules? Uh, most of them. Uh, it's, oh there's... my god, dude! Like <laughs> that's, that's like that's like you know nice eight hundred and seventy-five like 40... pages of just rules. Shit. See, that's why I like Dungeons and Dragons because even in their harder ones, like I think it's maybe. 50 ish pages of just rules oh my god okay fair enough it's not even large print that's mm -hmm. terrifying it's like a college book right it is <clears throat> so that's the 20th ed mm -hmm. or the 20th anniversary so the big thing about it is they don't just they never just give you the rules okay they don't really do that what they'll do is if that's the major book they're gonna be like Hey kid, you know you were you just I just saw you on the street and you weren't kind of you know using your powers the way that you could because you know you were a little bit too flashy with your moves. Um, let me talk to you in a way to help you do that with a little bit more subterfuge. And they will they will always talk like a mentor is talking to his mentee, mm -hmm. and that's how they kind of do a lot of the rules. And oh, then they'll okay. go into a mechanic. So yes, all of it is either history and rules kind of jammed together, but it makes the, it, they are always kind of telling you some sort of story. Okay. They never just, they, ne it's never like an actual rule book. It's more kind of like what mm -hmm. Palladium does. Yes. Because Palladium is very similar. Favorites. Every time I try to get into like riffs or something, I'm like, how, what, what the fuck do I grab for the source book? Like, how do I even play the game? <laughs> Well, it depends on uh, what part of Rifts you want to play. Are you going to play in Rifts? Are you going to play in Splicers? Fantasy? See, this shit like, was so confusing. And I was like, I'm not going to Google this. I just give up. So. I bought Dark Conspiracy yeah. instead. And that one was super, yeah. super cool. 
Well, my thing, white wolf, like the white wolf things, you play one, you and they're all the it's a similar kind of the mechanics are similar enough where you can just jump in and out. Most of the time, you would only have to figure out the difference between whatever your special ability for what you are. Mm. So, like, if you're playing a werewolf, you're gonna have to figure out about this whole going shape shifting parts. You're gonna have to figure out about their connection to the moon or Luna and their connection to Gaia with the Gnosis. You're going to have to figure it out. Or if you're a werecat, gonna... the sun. <laughs> and then you have to figure out that stuff. Were-cat. Whereas then, say again? No, Glenn said werecat and just my mind yes. went to. Yeah, that. man tiger. Yep. Matter of fact, most of the, um, <laughs> the werecats, most of that story takes a good chunk of it takes place in Africa. Oh, so, nice. So they do a lot of like the lion, the tigers, and the um, pumas and stuff like mm-hmm. that. So a lot of them are there. I don't, I don't think where cats are the sun though. They are I the sun. They are the sun. I thought crows and crows are the yeah the crows are also the sun. And, and I remember the mokle, which are the were dinosaurs. They are the also sun the sun. Animal. The where? sun and the moon. Yeah, it's not in the, you're right. Yes. You said where dinosaurs? Yep. They yeah. they take the alligators and they basically say that where alligators are the history or the memory of Gaia. So normally they talk to them talk to them as they're being dinosaurs or the only living ancestor of dinosaurs. So they normally make them as dinosaurs and crocodiles or alligators. Okay. So I mean, if you, you can think of an bear, animal. So it's not like an alligator bites or scratches somebody, and that yeah. becomes a were alligator. Nope. No, uh, the, all, the, the, only, the changing breeds are all born. It falls through a bloodline. Well, all, almost well, except all for rat, spiders. Rat, rat, rat <laughs> kin. So rat kin, which are the rats, they're a little weird, and the spiders are weird. Because the spiders can kind of pull a, are you close enough? Well, let's just stuff you full of spiders and see what happens. So they can be a little bit weird, but if you're talking about the cats, the werewolves, um, the crow, the bear, the sharks, most of those, those are all, they're all born that way. Okay. But then you turn around and then you get like a mage. Mage is born that way too. So they have an awakening and then they're the way that they are. But definitely, if you're talking about vampires, race, and mummies, they are all, they all kind of die. And they're created. And they're created. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. Yeah. And that's not even get started about Prometheus. <laughs> the movie? And, 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 and of course, with, <laughs> the, with the Frankenstein monsters, um... But a lot of, but and it also depends on what version of the game World of Darkness you're playing. So a lot of the stories I'm doing are based around the classic um, World of Darkness, where they're all kind of running towards apocalypse. Whereas Mm -hmm. then we talk about Promethean and Geist and some of those kinds of stories. Those were all a part of New World of Darkness, and that was a a rebranding. We're gonna go down a different road because in the classic system they decided you know what if everything hits apocalypse and nobody nobody fares well yeah they they essentially ran to the end of the story and they they released all the end game content and they're like all right what do we do now (laughs) (laughs) so so they created a new game brilliant uh, that was called the New World of Darkness and then they were like you know what everybody loved the old world of darkness and a lot of people aren't buying the New World of Darkness stuff, so we're going to call it Chronicles of Darkness instead and mm-hmm. start re-releasing the Old World of Darkness stuff again with the storylines. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. it's hey, That's why we have the 20th anniversary code. editions of stuff. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, kind of, yeah exactly that. <laughs> that's exactly what's happening. And so, yeah, they there, there's a lot of the World of Darkness franchise, whether it be um, kind of like the issue they had with Underworld because World of Darkness mm-hmm. had to run in with Underworld because some of that stuff the movie. was Underworld the movie because some of yeah. that data came from 
some parts of that data came from World oh, of Darkness. And so they were like, mm-hmm. we don't care that you're using it. We care that you didn't ask us. So there was a little bit of that with Underworld, um, which I was like, okay, that's pretty cool. Um, they do have a lot of the um, choose your own adventure, like Space Ace like books. Mm-hmm. Where you can go online and you can go and um, they have one that's called like Blood War, like, uh, oh my gosh, what is the name of it? Blood Net? They have one. It's not a blood net. It's like, it's like a. It's basically like a biker road war, where mm. you're a vampire on a road trip, <laughs> and it's a choose your own adventure, mm-hmm. like choose your own adventure book. But it's like a digital book where you, as you go through the story, you pick which way you want to go. Are you talking about Vampire the Masquerade, Blood, uh, uh, blood Road, or, or yeah, Night Road? Blood, all yeah, yeah. That, so that's something on Steam that's a, a visual novel that that is a yeah choose your own adventure thing. So mm-hmm. yeah, I mean there's a there's a whole lot of different media for for World of Darkness as a whole. Uh, many many different ways to consume it, and it is because of the fact that you can quite literally tell any type of story with the system uh, because of how far reaching it is in our modern culture and cultures past mm-hmm. um you know james you had mentioned uh earlier that there are uh, people asking you five days a week about your uh card game uh knowledge um right. what kind of what kind of uh what sort of questions are are you receiving from the community like uh, regarding that is there anything that you would like to say to the community regarding uh you know commonly asked questions stuff like that so the big thing like in the communities right now is a lot of the card games that we're talking about. Um, more so, um, it's Arcadia, the Wild Hunt, so the Changeling um, card game, and the Rage, the Apocalypse, the Werewolf card game. Um, lots of times in World of Darkness, um, they are very notorious for starting with their firstborn. Their firstborn was Vampire the Masquerade. So as soon as they decide they want to do a re, um, want to innovate or make something, that's the immediate one they start with. So you will see they never fail with making a vampire um, game, story, movie. They always pick them first. And as you proceed through the other concepts or other um, motifs in the game, they kind of die out with interest and then they don't, you might not see them always make it all the way to the end. So a lot of those card games, um, they are, they lost life. A lot of them lost life just because of not being able to hold on to doing because um, particularly um, it actually was called Jihad at first and then they changed it to um, Vampire the Eternal Struggle. That game and Rage Apocalypse, all of them were made by Wizards of the Coast. And then when mm-hmm. Wizards of the Coast decided we're going to focus on magic, they kind of returned all of their data back to all of their original, uh, original producers. So a lot of times, you'll see a lot of these games change hands a lot um, because they couldn't hold on to right. who controlled the art or what happened like that. Um, and World of Darkness is very big on we're going to make sure Vampire looks good. So a lot of the Rage data and a lot of the Changeling just didn't get any love. So a lot of them just want those other franchises that they enjoyed um, to get some life. Like right now, if you were to go on YouTube or anywhere, matter of fact, even if you were to go on Facebook and you type in the words um, Arcadia, and you put in Wild Hunt, the last time I did that, I actually found my own post. Wow. Because people just really don't, really don't talk about that game. And even if you look on um, YouTube, you'll see a couple of box openings, and then you won't see anything more. So a lot of the Rage and Changeling games there's just no data, which means they get no interest, and then they actually die. Um, but people know the game exists, and even when I go to um, 
So the Vitez community, they still have an actual live community. Um, they still play in Germany, South America, and the U.S. So I went to one of their things, and everybody's like, hey, you know about these games. Have you played Rage before? I was like, yeah, I've played Rage before. And it was like, wow, I got these cards sitting here, and nobody ever knows how to play, so it's nice to find them. So a lot of that connection, that connective tissue isn't all there because there just really isn't a physical tournament but people still love all those games. So a lot of times it's I'm like, hey. a silent majority a community that doesn't know that anybody else exists. Correct. Almost like, almost like a society of supernaturals that exists underneath the surface of our modern society. And yet nobody knows because they don't talk with one another. Hey, kid, I'm not, I'm not ready for all this deep shit tonight. <laughs> <laughs> so do you... Have you ever considered putting like a wiki database together of how these games work and the rule sets and everything else? You don't have to continually answer all these questions on a weekly basis. So the funniest thing is I am the, I guess I would say I'm the dog that barks the loudest. Mm -hmm. And so I am probably, I would use the word because I'm barking the loudest. It brings out the people who answers, who answers the real question. Um, so right now on the White Wolf Wiki, there is some data about Rage. There is a whole blog site for Rage as well. Um, the one, there's also a blog site for Vampire, um, Vitez, the, but actually Vitez is actually printing cards right now. So you can go and look up Black Chandry printing and they print out real live Vitez cards right as we speak. Um, they are still in works of making new updates and things like that. But when it comes to um, Werewolf and Changeling, Werewolf is doing better than Changeling. Changeling doesn't have anybody. Um, they made a 20th Ed supplement for Races of Arcadia, and I got to talk to the author who wrote that. He's like super awesome, but it was actually interesting that he only ever played Vampire. He never played any other um, White Wolf franchise. So it's like, wow, you've only played Vampire? And you've kind of made ties to other stories and you didn't even realize you did it. <laughs> that was actually pretty cool. Um, so the Arcadia one doesn't get a lot, of, um, a lot of traffic. So the one that probably doesn't have anything at all is Arcadia at all. They didn't even finish the third installment of it. They made a name. They put out... Um, a couple of flyers for it and they didn't do anything more with it so making a wiki page sure i think that would be something that definitely can be in there um because people want to play the game but a lot of it is still kind of a lot of the people are just old that play this game mm. right there 50s, 60s. So this is like the World War II and Napoleonics of card games. Yeah, they 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 they're a lot older. So what? I, and there's nothing wrong with it. Wait, I Hunter laughs. Cool that, but next time you go to any of your local like hobby shops and you look on a Thursday night it, or Thursday or Friday night, it's gonna be filled with either two things: Warhammer players or old dudes playing Flames of War, Bolt Action, or Napoleonics. <laughs> That and I mean, when I went to my first tournament, they called me the young guy. Mm. It was like, oh, oh wow, I'm like 45. I'm the young guy. It's like yikes. And so there's there's a lot of older players that have have an intimate relationship with the books, the storyline. They they all have that same kind of vibe to them. Now, are you so, sure they're not wizards? Like actual like wizards? Just curious. No, they're, they're probably actually vampires. <laughs> Not necessarily wizards, um, but yeah, a lot of a lot of them as a whole they they don't they don't do the things that if you were a brand new flesh and blood player or you were playing um, the new one that I just saw played. I saw the One Piece card game played. Mm. There's not you're not flooded with people making meta decks. People mm. are like, hey, do you want a One Piece deck box? Um, you want a play mat that has Luffy on it? Um, there's not all this stuff like that. So some of these games, they are still using blog spots. Oh, wow. Like you go in, it's like, 
oh, this isn't a wiki page. <laughs> this is an old world play, world um, plus or world press, WordPress blog, blog page. You're like, oh, this hasn't been updated since <laughs> like before 2000. The dawn of HTML 2.0. <laughs> And it was like, oh yeah, that, and and that's what you're seeing. So a lot of them just have blogs, and I'm like, oh, wow, those are kind of hard to maneuver through. Um, there isn't this, and it takes someone to like do it. Um, and a lot of times, and a little bit of me doing this is, I started de- I started being a storyteller for World of Darkness while I was in Germany, and I made a lot of friends that we all play the same games. And I was a storyteller for him. I'm so I sorry I missed out on that because James didn't recognize me for what I was. <laughs> um, I didn't know you at all. <laughs> you 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 knew me from the karaoke bar. Yeah, but I met you after. Oh, after this. Before. Okay, okay, okay. All right. I you, you, you met me later. You met me after that, that had ended. And I was actually, by the time you met me, I was actually playing Rifts. Matter of fact, I was playing I, I gotta ask, were you in the army? I was in the air force. Air force, okay. Uh, not bad. <laughs> so all I can think of is, uh, like, Glenn. Glenn should know this quote. Listen, I'm not gay, but twenty dollars is twenty dollars. <laughs> oh, you didn't see that? Uh, I I thought I sent you guys. Wow, <laughs> no, you just got judged. <laughs> I did get judged. No, there's. I, I thought I sent you guys that short. No, Never mind. No that was like that was an in joke to a different group of friends, I guess. And it was like, no, you're not being. I don't told. know about that. Other group. We're on our own journey. <laughs> We're on our own journey. <laughs> he just no, has higher income standards than you do, life. apparently. <laughs> it was like, live your best life. I told. I've heard that before. Not while I was in the military. Okay. Most, of the, most, of the, most of the most of the time, the military quotes kind of fold around, kind of dealt with, you know, uh, like Full Metal, um, with the whole. You know, me love you long time. We heard mm-hmm. a bunch of those. Full metal jacket. There were most of those quotes. And being that I was a part of this, and being that I was Space Force, normally all I heard was space jokes. <laughs> or the Louis space Christian. man in the Air Force. Merchandise, merchandise, merchandise. I was part of the Space Command in the Army. It was just, you know, Army. <laughs> <laughs> they still have space. I mean, yeah, yeah, we had we had army space, yeah, totes. Uh, I mean, I used to work on satellites, you know. So, how did. many alien women have you impregnated? Not nearly enough. <laughs> <laughs> are are you like Captain Kirk levels, or he was always in his nightgown? Yeah. <laughs> Captain Kirk was always in his nightgown. I don't think we've ever seen him in his his actual. He's uniform. never actually worn a uniform, mm-hmm. no. Rightfully so. <laughs> the more Captain Kirk or Orville? Ooh. Ooh, Orville, all the way. It's the best yeah, Star Trek series honestly, we've gotten in the last decade. Thank you. It really yes. so, so much so. Yes. It, it, it's so funny, too, because wasn't it something like uh, Seth MacFarlane was told, he was just like, I just wanted to make Star Trek, but they get, but the execs kept saying, oh, you have to make it funny, though. So he's like, all right, fine, yeah. I'll sprinkle a dick joke here. Problem solved. Now let's go back to the real story. <laughs> <laughs> Much like this podcast, exactly. <laughs> I, still we're, we're, I mean, James is really teaching teaching the audience and, and you guys some things, and uh, and myself actually. And and you're like, and then uh, dick jokes. Nothing wrong with them. They fit. Okay, what, but that's what she I, said. White Wolf actually had the dirty. Um, there was dirty White Wolf. There was had, dirty White Wolf. Yeah, the dirty the, secrets of the Black Hand. Uh, yeah, they had there the was, Black Hand where there was like. Yeah, I also have that book. Hold on. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, they had that like, smutty white wolf. But while he's looking like, for that. And it was like, oh, well, now we're not just going to see somebody get gutted. We might see boobs. Go ahead. <laughs> it's what you want. <laughs> I, 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 will, I will stand firm in my belief that I believe it's season three, episode seven of the Orville, where they, they have the time capsule, the, the, the iPhone from the girl uh, from way back oh. in, uh, I think it was like 2007 or 2013, whenever it was, yeah. the pilot, he finds that and he falls in love with that girl and he takes all the data from her phone and creates mm-hmm. a virtual version of her on the ship. That is one of the saddest episodes of, of television or just the saddest. Dude. Just, just, 
what, was it even later on? Like, when he went he back like, and he met her? Oh, yeah, no, he went back in time and yeah, like, he went back started and a family, family with her. Yeah, yeah he that broke the temporal, like, the temporal co uh, continuum to go be with this chick that he's never met before. No, no, screw him. I mean, <laughs> screw them. They left him there. Yeah, they oh, left yeah, him they there. Did leave him there. And that was my whole thing. I felt for him. I'm like, no, you abandoned me. Like, mm -hmm. I, fuck with the. Ah, see, I'm gonna get into a rant real quick, but I'm not. Sorry, James. But I feel like it's one of those moments where, again, for is since we're talking about military, where military will tell you, "Hey, here's the regs, here's the specs you gotta follow." But mm -hmm. for as application in the real world, sometimes it doesn't happen. And in that case, he's like, "What do you want me to do? Like, you left me here for five years or whatever. Like, this is all I know. Like, they said to do this, but they never experienced that mm -hmm. lonesomeness." On that part, so yeah, that was like one of the like one of the saddest episodes. I feel for. I thought Gordon. it was longer than five years because I thought he had like a kid who was a teenager. No, he had no. It was two. I think he had the most two, two kids. little kids. Yeah, oh, two okay. kids. Not only one was a teenager. Okay. God, the Orville is such a good fucking show. Such a good fucking show. <laughs> yeah, it went from. I mean, don't get me wrong. It was funny, but then when he got to the seriousness, I was like, okay, Dude, cool. This, but then it, when it was it's fine, like it's Rick and Morty. Like, It'll go Dick and Fart Joe's, Dick and Fart Joe's existential story building. What? It's just the way it hits you. It's like it's that like whiplash effect. I mean, you know, whenever whenever it comes to the world of darkness, I mean, like probably one of the best oh. examples of that is the what we lost. Did we lose Nico. Oh, we lost Hunter. Well, um, uh, one of the best examples of that uh, has to be the um, oh the the crazy mages, not the mouth uh, the 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 Melfi? The, huh. You mean the no-fi crazy, or are you talking about the marauder crazy? The marauder crazy, where they basically create like a bubble of reality around themselves uh, that that you know conforms to to their worldview, and so like basically you're sitting there enjoying your life, and then all of a sudden you're on the Star Trek Enterprise and you're fighting Klingons <laughs> uh, because that is the worldview of this gentleman that has completely broke with reality. And that is the Marauders, because okay. they're in quiet. <laughs> that is, a, it's a magical crazy. That is what quiet is. Interesting. Okay. That's yeah. Cool. Yeah, and so I mean, like, dude, there, it, in the short amount of time that we have, there is so much, so so much that we can cover with World of Darkness, but it, it's it's. I, I highly suggest our listeners to go out and do your own research, find your niche. Uh, there is there is some sort of world of darkness out there for you, whether you're a furry trying to trying to play a, a were tiger, or you know uh, a Punisher uh, fan, comic book fan that enjoys uh, you know uh, torturing bad guys for information in, in Hunter the Reckoning, like you know it's it it's it's really spectacular. Like the the ability of this of this uh, particular. Uh, game set and, and it's one of the main reasons why uh, I've been so adamant to work with James on these projects um, and you know it's I just kind of want to like throw all my stuff away that I'm doing like work wise you know uh, other project wise I just want to work on this so that we can finally you know get it up get it out and move on to the next cool thing but it's it's slow going it's <laughs> as it is and you know this james it's slow going we've been working on this for what two years now trying to get things together we've been working for two years but i started yeah. in uh 2015. yeah Jeez. so i'm 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 a late comer to the game and uh but it's it's just one of those things like i think i sent you over like a huge ass document that had like just stuff that i i went on this like weird like you know uh uh like adhd fueled hyper focus where basically i studied and found every single reference that i could uh for the spirit book and then mm -hmm. i kind of set it down and james was like hold up slow down bro mm -hmm. <laughs> the, uh, i remember that conversation it was kind of funny because it was just it was it was just basically i i i just learned everything i could and it goes so deep it's such a rabbit hole of a game so basically he's so mentoring good. you he is in a lot of ways i mean there's a lot of things that, that i know on my own there's I, I i bring stuff to the table i promise you but james james is the 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 is definitely far more invested than i whenever it comes to uh, uh time spent in service hold on hold on let's not get carried away glenn is putting a lot of great ideas and he's putting some things in there 
that um, that I don't think about. Now, I am familiar with a broad brush of the content for World of Darkness, but Glenn has put in a lot of work to find out those little fine points in there to make sure that for someone that is interested in the lore and they want to know the bloodline to the T that would think through that, um, Glenn has been putting that input in there and that is paramount because that's how White Wolf ended up making so many books and so much extra is because they didn't just simply say, well, the werewolves feel this. Their werewolves are split up in groups and those groups have subgroups. So when Glenn comes in and brings it in, he's not just simply going to say where the werewolves think that. He's going to be the one that'll tell you um, the Stargazer Gazer's Order of the Zephyr will say that. And once you say that, someone who is interested in that lore can dive down that far if they so desire and pull that out and it would be in line with their thoughts. And that is paramount in a story that that option was always there, mm -hmm. whether they talk to it or not. So he's doing a lot of that in the story. So he's actually, because I'm right now he's selling himself short, but no, he is providing quite a bit of data and a, quite a bit of very solid input in the goal here. Thank you, James. I appreciate that. Praise from fucking Caesar, man. <laughs> But yeah, it's 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 it, we have a hard road ahead of us. But I think I think once it eventually comes out, like we're gonna look back on this and be like, "Holy crap! Look what we did, man!" And, yeah. and people are gonna benefit. And it's gonna and it's gonna touch a lot of things because the real goal is, you know, right now we're in a world where diversity is important and showing, you know, like a different point of view. And there's a lot of times where when you think about different cultures, because I'm a world traveler. Oh my gosh. I went on a world tour of the singers, so I've seen about a good chunk of countries. So for me, you know, when do you have the book that talks about what happens in South America? Mm -hmm. And it's not just simply when there's that one problem. They dive into little, little small aspects of culture. Um, I can throw, I can roll a bowling ball with how many times you're going to find a group of mages that are european or german but what about you know someone from um the philippines mm. when am i where when is that going to come up so white wolf opened the door for people that have another culture to tell a little different story and add that mm. supernatural slash horror flair to their story and that's what um i wanted to put in this this project because outside of classic world of darkness the next time you'll hear anything that even remotely resembles african-american lore is you'll go into scion scions about like basically demigods children of gods and they actually have a whole line of voodoo in there mm -hmm. which is cool but that is not a part of classic world of darkness that is a part of what they were doing with scion which kind of is doing its own thing. So right. I wanted to use the lore in classic World of Darkness and create this merger of American actual American history. Yeah. I feel like a lot of the a lot of the the source material that they created for World of Darkness as a whole is kind of a bit limited by the by the cultural scope, the the the, the cultural competency of the the original writers in the way mm -hmm. that like they're like uh, hey, you know, if it has to do with some sort of animism and uh, it's, you know, not white people, then it's going to be, you know, some sort of spirit shaman. You know, like, <laughs> they, don't, they don't talk about, you know, the, the, the Shinto element, uh, ele uh, elementalists that, you know, uh, study the, 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 the five elements of, uh, of uh, Shinto beliefs and stuff like that. You know, except in maybe like one source book, you know, where they might be like, oh, yeah, uh, uh, the Wushu over here, you know, he did this thing kind of. And it's not even like Japanese. It's like Chinese. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so it's it's there's a lot of uh, a lot of detail work to be done uh, to fill in the gaps and just a, a whole lot of ground to cover uh, with respect to it. And 
I'm thinking that once we get this un- underground railroad uh, knocked out of the park, that that it will open the door for for another uh, you know part of history in some part of the world that hasn't been touched because of the fact there's so many so much virgin land to to cover. So yeah, and maybe which which is part of always part of my goal is maybe it gives another person the opportunity to think that their idea is worth the damned. So for me, I'm not, I'm not necessarily so I, I, I would love to get my ideas through and make sure that it makes it somewhere, but maybe somebody else will have a story. And once they see a little bit of a different story told that could um, get the stamp of approval, then maybe somebody else will get that idea that their idea has merit. It's like a, a real, I'm Spartacus Mm. sort of sort of movement you know <laughs> and to to inspire the masses to create that's that is that is definitely a goal well uh gentlemen we're kind of rounding out on yep. uh uh time here uh james is there anything else that you wanted to uh touch base on uh you've provided such a uh a wonderful amount of information and and excellent perspective into this um, so far that we we haven't made nearly as many dick jokes as we typically do. Um, it's true. So, I, I had but they were solid though. But they were was, solid though. They were <laughs> solid. Dick jokes. Yes, yeah, solid dick jokes. Yeah, <laughs> all about it. <laughs> Those big throbby solid jokes. See, there you go. See, James, this is what happens when you promote it. Do you? Oh, man. Don't enable her. Don't be an enabler. <laughs> but. Um, uh, I wanted to tell you, thank you so much, James, for finally proving that, that I'm actually doing something outside of this podcast. Yes, uh, yes, I'm thank the, you, because we guys. thought he, he got on here. He, we thought he just used his connections, just worm mm-hmm. his way into our show. Oh, I see. No, he's actually he's definitely been working. Um, the only thing <laughs> I have to actually say, he's actually been working. He's been, put, he's been putting it in. I <laughs> met him and didn't even realize he even liked this game <laughs> until I went to his house in Texas. And saw a shrine. To, it was a shrine. <laughs> um, to World of Darkness. There were little cats gardening and everything. And, you know, I was like, oh, I didn't realize you liked this game. Um, and I was like, I fucking love this game. It was taught was to right. me by a, by a convict. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the Triple XL Bandit, known as the FBI. My, my good friend, Joseph Wade Walker. Oh, God. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Love but, pieces. But for me, <laughs> I just actually thank you for the time. Um, I really appreciate being here. This is the first time I've ever uh, been on a podcast before. So I think that's pretty awesome. So Don't really worry, it's all being... downhill from here. Oh, <laughs> I can't wait. I waited yeah, James, my whole life for this. James, I, I think I speak for everyone in saying that you have you have a a uh, uh, an open hall pass to come back anytime that you'd like um, and talk more about this stuff because uh, mm-hmm. it's fucking spectacular. And I'm sure that the users may may or their our audience may have some more questions as as well as uh, sure. Rico and uh, the other guys whenever uh, whenever they uh, get more into it. Go ahead, Rico. What are you going to say? I just have one question. You don't have to explain it. It could be yes or no. Did you did I hear you right when you said Frankenstein? Yes, People- Frankenstein monsters. Okay. So that that would be. Um, if that interests you, the the book for that would be Promethean, and you can um, yeah, you guys get in touch with me. I mean, it's interesting. I just I would just add, the last thing I had was just the way you got way you describe it, especially with Glenn. To, especially with Glenn was just right now the way I look at this is like it's just the monster universe. Mm-hmm. Yes. Like, I think of any like even when you mentioned Mummy, the first thing I even though I haven't seen it, re seen it was the old movie of Monster Squad. I don't yeah. know if you guys oh, remember yeah. that one. I've seen that. Yeah, years. Dracula, all them, like, like that. But yeah, uh, like definitely. the extraordinary gentleman, like have all the yep. little. Mo- <laughs> so yeah, pretty much. Um, World of Darkness is solidly that. Um, it, it's actually called. It's sometimes they refer to it as an urban horror, because there's vampires, werewolves, mages. Yeah. It was all about the creatures that go bump in the night. Mm. And the, a lot of the human uh, most monsters, of, and, and, and yeah. they and they kept them as human as possible. Gotcha. Dare I say some like almost like cabin in the woods where they had a roster of all the monsters and and everything that would come in. Mm, okay, there's a book about I'm that. Like a night warriors kind of guy. I was so, going to say like you know you get into the, the 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 Fomori book 
I mean, you have you have cabin in the woods right there. Like <laughs> that's the uh, the people that are possessed by these evil evil uh, bane spirits that are uh, uh, possessed by the uh, the, the worm. worm the worm because everything in the world of darkness is three is 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 controlled by the number three. Okay. Yeah, it's it's a very common uh, um, mechanism that they use in in that universe. Interesting. So okay. it's interesting. So okay. um, cool. Uh, uh, Nico, would you agree that is a podcast? That is a podcast. Spectacular. Uh, Nico, you, you you typically say something. Oh, right? I need to do the thing. Okay. Have yeah. a good night, everybody. Drink water. <laughs> good night. <laughs>